What's up, Men's Physique fans, and welcome back to another video. We have our very first 2025 Olympian qualified athlete after this past weekend, Sasquatch Warrior. But before we get there, we have to go over the recent updates that we got from those who are stepping on stage in 2024's Olympia, who are expected to be within that top conversation. And is Raymond Edmonds back? Please tell me he's back. Guys, we have a lot to catch up on, so let's sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. This past weekend in Seattle, Washington, the very first qualifying opportunity for 2025 Olympia took place. And guys, it's safe to say, not only are current Olympians doing everything in their power to already punch their tickets for next year's Olympia, but there's a lot of young and hungry guys trying to get ahead of the schedule in order for them to maximize their window in order to be the best versions of themselves come next year's Olympia. So before we get into that, I do wanna give a quick shout out to our top five finalists, starting off with number five on this list in Dustin Alvis. You guys have heard me say this name a lot on this channel. A guy who's consistently in those top call outs. Now, though he has placed as high as second multiple times just this season, he did fall back to fifth place in a lineup that truly was a phenomenal lineup. Dustin Alves has a phenomenal physique. He's very balanced from front to back, and he is somebody who was consistently in those top callouts for a reason. He does need to continue to add on a little bit more tissue in his chest, which is simply going to fill out a wide frame that he already has. But when he does that, there's no doubt in my mind that he is going to be a guy who not only is in those top callouts, but finally punching his ticket for the Olympia. Again, he has one of the best backs on any given stage and he can continue to fine tune that conditioning. Like I said, continue to progress in his off seasons in order to put on the necessary amount of tissue. He is going to be an Olympia qualified athlete. You guys are hearing it here because I firmly believe this physique is what the men's physique division is looking for. And coming in at fourth place, we have John Reese. And I'll be honest, I wasn't too familiar with him going into this show. And not only that, I believe this is the very first time I've ever spoken about him on this channel. And I wouldn't be so surprised if this is the highest placing he's ever had in his career, but he did bring a phenomenal package. Now, a few things that I do want to see John continue to fine tune is simply his posing and his presentation, right? In order to manipulate that waistline, I do believe he is going to need to angle himself a little bit better in order to stand next to those guys with supreme structures. But the one thing that John has comparative to anybody else, especially in this lineup, is a crazy back. And it's safe to say, and this is something that I love seeing in the men's physique division, because this wasn't this wasn't happening just a couple years ago where the backs are developing dramatically. And if you don't have a good back on a stage, there's a good chance you're not going to be in those top call outs. But I will say this, John, he has the best back on this stage. And that's why I believe he was in the fourth place spot today. But again, a guy with a lot of potential, he looks like an older individual. So it was really cool to see somebody who was older and also running it with the young guys. So I do believe John has a phenomenal physique and he has a bright future in this division. And coming in at third place, you have your USA's overall champion in 2022 in TJ Sanchez. And I've had the pleasure of following TJ's career ever since he first turned pro in 2022. I've seen what him and Cuts have been able to do in a short amount of time in order to maximize this guy's potential. And it's safe to say on this given day, his potential was shown because this guy has truly put on tons of tissue, not only since turning pro, but since he started to compete last year as a pro. And one thing that I have noticed about TJ is he's always had a phenomenal, phenomenal structure. The one thing he needed to continue to do was add general detail throughout his midsection. But one thing that he clearly did was add the necessary size in order to stand up there with the big guys. I've actually had an opportunity to compete with TJ just last year. So me seeing him in person and now seeing the changes that he's made to his physique should get everybody out there excitement that if they actually take time to prioritize their weaknesses and again take the time in order to simply fine tune and become a better version of yourself in an off season and take it as seriously as TJ's did, you could be on a stage in just one year from now looking like a completely new athlete because TJ wasn't even touching first call outs last year. And now he finished third, just two places away from qualifying for the Olympia. And coming in at second place, you have your seven time qualified Olympian in Joe Manji. You know what's funny? A lot of people don't know this about Joe, but Joe has been competing for a very long time. When they talk about guys who have made it through different generations, you hear George Brown, Andre Ferguson, you hear Tyler or Ryan Terry, and, and, and so many of these other guys, Sadiq, right? But people don't realize that Joe has also been one of those guys who have been standing alongside of these guys for years. 
years. And he has been a guy who's been consistently in these conversations. Again, a favorite on almost every single show that he does. A guy who brings next level of conditioning. And a guy, again, who is generally balanced from front to back. I do think that he does need to add considerably more thickness to his lower back. But he is, again, one of those guys with a lot of muscle on his frame, but somehow still makes it look very clean for the men's physique division. But one thing that I will say about Joe, and this is something that I've always thought about him throughout his entire career, is simply finding a way to look more comfortable on stage. Again, a guy who's a veteran who has who should likely have a veteran's presence, I don't look at Joe while he's posing and say he is very comfortable, even though he probably is. You know, I don't see him shaking in his poses. I don't see him necessarily continuously resetting. I just think that his posing is a little bit more stiff. And I think that if he can kind of break that hip a little bit more, right, and just simply show off his conditioning in a more of a clean, comfortable way in terms of presentation, this guy's physique is going to be taken to the next level because not many people can stand next to him size to size. And again, his conditioning is typically one of the best in the entire shows that he does do. So with him just missing out on his qualification, from my understanding, he's probably going to jump in the Legion Sports Festival and keep running it in, in order to get an early qualification for 2025. But again, Joe showed up, he looked absolutely phenomenal, controlled his variables, but he went against a guy who has been making a lot of noise later in the 2024 season in Alex Rogers. And Alex Rogers was on. The one thing that I love about Alex is that he took the time in order to fine tune and improve on a lot of the weaknesses that he had just last season. And again, it's not easy for a lot of guys to not step on stage when a lot of their counterparts are competing, qualifying for the Olympia. And he is on a team with a lot of successful individuals seeing a lot of those guys qualify for the Olympia. So I can only imagine the urge that he had to say, screw this, let's jump into a prep. But instead, he stayed calm and he waited. And though he didn't punch his ticket at some of the earlier shows like San Antonio or the Florida Pro, he did punch his ticket in 2025 at the Sasquatch Pro, which not only qualifies him for the Olympia, but gives him a year to fine tune again and get better on what he still needs to improve on, which is simply his back density. And from there, I can't really say anything else. Maybe just add a little bit more overall width to his, his frame, which is only going to make his waistline and overall just structure stand out even more. Alex looks phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And again, I'm a massive fan of not only who he is as a man, as a bodybuilder, but all of it wrapped into one. So I'm really excited. Congratulations to Alex Rogers. About damn time you punched your ticket and you were the very first. When we hear this again, man, let it sink in. You were the very first 2025 Olympian qualified athlete. Congratulations. With a lot of the top guys not competing at this year's Olympia, that opens up a lot of opportunity for young and hungry guys to make a name for themselves to break into that top 15. But there are a general consensus of those who believe who have been in that conversation in the past who will be there again based off of the list. So we have some recent updates from four of those guys who have either been in that top call out or who are looking to be in that top call out this year. And starting off with your fourth ranked men's physique athlete in the world, we have Emmanuel Hunter. And guys, I think Emmanuel is very slept on. I think more recency bias has taken over because he hasn't competed in a long time. And he's one of those guys who doesn't have a crazy social media presence and he's more under the radar. But people forget just how dominant that he can be when he is 100% on in the best version of himself. And we saw that last year at the Olympia. He went from 11th place and jumped all the way to fourth place. Like, that is not easy to do. Not only that, he's had a lot of time since the beginning of this season to fine tune and get better and better and better. And based off of these recent updates, it's safe to say that he has certainly done that. This is probably the best level of conditioning that I've ever seen Emmanuel Hunter in going into a show and already just simply being three weeks out from the Olympia. Typically, the level of detail is something that is always desired on his physique because he has always had one of the widest physiques on stage. He can stay next to anybody muscle density wise. But again, it was just simply that detail that Ryan Terry S lines through his midsection and back that allowed him to stand out. But with this level of conditioning, I'm confident that if he can continue on this trajectory and continue to improve on this for the next three weeks, Oh man, Emmanuel might not just be going for that fourth place this year because again, a lot of guys are counting him out. I'm not. Emmanuel looks absolutely phenomenal. 
And the next update we have is from your Texas Pro and Chicago Pro Champion in Abisai Pierre's. And the first thing that stands out in Abisai is his structure. But the one thing that I see that has clearly improved from previous shows to now is his fullness and primarily throughout his chest. If he can continue to fine tune and bring that conditioning that he brought, even just at Texas, he is going to be a problem. Again, a guy with confidence, a guy with a very good stage presence, a guy who has very high hopes for not only just being in a conversation, but for kicking in the door and being in that top call out. And again, a guy like this can easily do so. And the way that he's trending now, I think that he can be there. And we have your first update from your ninth ranked men's physique athlete in the world in Vitor Chavez. Vitor has had multiple battles with Ali Bilal. Ali Bilal is expected to place not only in the top call out, but he's expected to be in that top three this year with all the hypes currently surrounding his name. But can Vitor, finally break that first call out. Because one thing I love about Vitor is that in every single year he gets better and better, but not only that, his placings get better and better. First year at the Olympia, place 13th. Second year at the Olympia, place 9th. And then this year, what do you guys think? Can he finally break that top seven, top eight? After this current update, I think so. And I think he's expected to. Because the one thing about Vitor is that he's consistent. But the one thing that Vitor does need to control is his midsection, because that's the one thing that has been knocked on him, is his inability to control his midsection on stage and having a little bit of a distension. And I can tell you this, at the Olympia, especially on that big stage where the standard is set, they're not gonna let that fly. But again, he's very balanced. He's cleaned up his posing so much better. He manipulates his waistline significantly better. He's taken out some of that fluff stuff that a lot of people knew him for and simply prioritizing hitting his best shots and holding his poses. So again, I'm really excited to not only see him go against Ali Bilal again, but seeing him bring in much improved package, now having more time coached undercuts. And we have your first full update from Edvon Palmero, another coach guy and a guy who placed fifth place at the 2022 Mr. Olympia. And it's safe to say, Edvon has had one hell of a journey ever since he has placed fifth. Because in 2022, his physique was significantly streamlined. He brought next level of conditioning. And the only thing that he did need to continue to add was simply thickness to his back. But instead, he added thickness like everywhere. <laughs> in 2023, he came back big as a house. Just, just the mass of a man. And he looks like he actually gained like 20 pounds of tissue. And then after he got the feedback and then not only falling from fifth to 11th, he needed to lose that muscle because that was also the year they added the weight cap. So because of that, he took time off and he probably took off a lot of drugs, <laughs> a lot of training because the next time he stepped on stage, it's safe to say he completely reinvented his physique after, I'm not even gonna say reinvented, maybe like de-invented, like is that a word? Well, we're gonna make it one because going into that 2023 season, he did a lot of damage that really truly set him back. Because again, men's physique is a look. It's not about just putting on as much muscle as possible. But when he did team up with cuts, they streamlined his physique again. Not only that, they cleaned it up. He still had that good size. He had that polish and he still worked on a lot of his weaknesses like his back. But this time, he was just significantly overall a better men's physique athlete, right? Not a bodybuilder, but a men's physique athlete. And you can clearly see it here. You know, he's looking very good, polished, clean. And I'm very excited to see what he does this year because he has amazing showings this season. And we're gonna see if he can continue that momentum and get better going into this year's Olympia. Guys, the nostalgia hit with this one to say the least. Omar Ventura recently made an Instagram post posing in Turkey with who? Raymond Edmonds, not only one of his best men's physique athletes of all time, but one of the greatest men's physique athletes of all time, and probably one of my biggest inspirations of all time, especially being a taller guy. Guys, take a look at this. Not only is his posing still clean, right? He kind of takes you back to the last time he stepped on stage, just looking comfortable, confident, and that space presence that he always has, and you can tell that it just hasn't gone away. What do you guys think? If Raymond Edmonds was at his all time best, and let's just say all of the men's physique athletes were competing this, say last season, right? Because there's a lot of guys who aren't competing this year. We don't know what they're gonna bring this year. Where do you think Raymond would have placed? Going against the best Ryan Terry of all time, going against Aaron Banks, who's a very similar comparison to him. Who, where do you guys think that he would place in the current modern day men's physique? I think it's safe to say that he would have won last year's Olympia. I think so. I mean, I, listen, I love Ryan Terry. He looked absolutely insane. And maybe that's just me saying that because I love Raymond too. But I think that uh, Raymond would have got him. You think he would have got him. But nonetheless, guys, take a look at this video, man. It's so cool to see Ray back in his element doing his thing, still being within the fitness community because we haven't seen him in so long doing really many things fitness related. But 
I still have hope, man. He's never announced a retirement. I hope he's gonna come back one day. In the last video, I highlighted five dark horses who I believe can make a name for themselves at this year's Olympia. But I think a lot of people sleep on are the international competitors who are really making a name for themselves because we don't hear about them as frequently. There are still a lot of guys who compete in other countries who just aren't as well known. But I've been paying them very close attention and these guys are looking insane. And it's not about where you're from on the Olympia stage, it's about how you look. And these guys, they're bringing it. So I'm gonna give you guys my top three dark horses who I believe who are going to be the international sensations on the Olympia stage, starting off with Joven Segaban. Joven has recently teamed up with Coach Cuts. And guys, I, there's not much I can say. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sit back and let this video play because this man is looking nuts, nuts. The size, the conditioning, and again, he's already a good poser and presenter. You know, he actually used to recently work with Jeremy Buendia throughout his career. And that's how I actually first started to pay very close attention. So it's cool that not only he was brought up by a current champion, so he has that championship mindset and understanding of what it takes, but now being with Coach Cuts, a guy who's also led champions to where they are, it's gonna be a really good combo. And that presence of knowing about what it's like to be a champion and then be now being coached by a champion, I think that's really gonna show face on stage because not only is physique speaking for itself, but that mental side of the sport, I guarantee he's gonna take it a lot further than people realize. And another guy who's making a lot of noise is Chris Punta. And I will never forget the viral video of him at his weigh-in for his show and just hit that nasty Christmas tree back shot. Guys, when I saw that, it was just insane. And then he went on winning the show and there was no question that he was going to be a guy to keep an eye out for at the Olympia. Because again, there's a reason why that video went viral. And there's a reason why he won and qualified for the Olympia because his freak factor translated. And again, even though he's maybe unknown in the States because he's very popular elsewhere, I do believe that this physique, because he's gonna be big, right? He's going to be conditioned. He's going to be balanced. I do believe, guys, you got to keep a lookout for the guys like this, man, because no doubt if you show up off, Chris is one of those guys who can be an assassin and creep in and again, steal a spot and creep into that top 15. And another guy who has been put on my radar recently is Isaiah Keck. And I could have completely just butchered that name, so I apologize, but he's actually coached by DJ Pure and some of the updates that they've been posting, guys, what the fuck? I mean, we talk about how crazy Ryan Terry looks. We talk about crazy how a lot of these other guys who have been in that top call out look, but look, look at this. This, this is insane. And I think a lot of guys are going unnoticed, man, because of where they're from. But on this channel, we're gonna try to highlight the best of the best. And not only that, the up and coming, but he's not only up and coming, he looks like he's already arrived. And I'm excited to see how this translates on stage because he actually qualified very early in the season. He was one of those guys like Alex Rogers who punched his ticket like right after the qualification window closed. So again, it's more recency bias, maybe because we don't remember, but he's recently, you know, teamed up with DJ Pure, another guy who outside of cuts has have the most current Olympians. And it's safe to say their recipe is clearly working. And if they can make this translate on stage, like I said, size will not be an issue. Conditioning will certainly not be an issue. He definitely has a back. He definitely has the overall fullness and a pop to his front. Again, he's a smaller stature guy. So we're going to see how he stands next to guys with the bigger structure, but he looks insane like nuts. So I'm excited to see how this translates. And another guy who I want to highlight, but I've recently just found out that he will not be competing at this year's Olympia. And keep in mind, this is a massive story and news for the Indian community is a meet. If you guys remember, I competed in India earlier this season where I placed second behind who? A meet. And this is where I saw a meet up close and personal and even told him, man, you have tons of potential and i will never forget watching him compete because keep in mind he was an amateur that then turned pro that day and then went on to the pro stage and won when i saw him at the amateur level i even said it this guy has a lot of potential and can beat a lot of current pros right now <laughs> fast forward a few hours he beat me but nonetheless i think a meet is one of those physiques that still needs time to fine tune to get better but he has tons of potential and it sucks that India, especially with not a lot of guys out of India, just having an opportunity to make noise at the Olympia. Amit was one of those guys who I truly believe could. Maybe not this season, but eventually could. And one thing I will say is, the reason why is the visa issues. And we've seen this happen for a lot of guys, especially in the open bodybuilding division, but a lot of guys not be able to get their visa. I spoke with him and he told me that he was denied four times, four times in order to get to the States and compete. 
And I can only imagine his mental state throughout the entire process of a prep, getting denied, denied, and denied, and not necessarily knowing whether or not he was even going to step on stage. Because like I said, he has a whole country behind him. You know, we have our families, we have uh, our fan bases, the people who follow us on social media, but he's a country, a whole country, an amazing one too, who are passionate about this sport. So I can only imagine where his head is, but nonetheless, brother, the fact that you qualify for the Olympia should be a massive win in itself. But again, he is going to be a amazing athlete to pay attention to moving forward. And I'm definitely going to get my get back very soon. But again, man, I'm sorry to hear that you won't be competing at this year's Olympia. And again, use this as motivation to get better because you will be back. And now that you are caught up on all things men's physique, I want to take a quick second to thank each and every single one of you guys who have recently supported the hero campaign for the Manifest Competition Wear brand. Guys, as an owner of the business, it's hard to put into words just not only how how thankful I am, but more importantly, this actually see the vision that you had being manifested into actual reality. I can't stress that enough, man. We made these board shorts not to make money. We made these board shorts to truly elevate the men's physique division and add value in ways that other brands aren't doing by simply enhancing your look on stage, not just by the designs, but also by the fit, the material, and also the way that we cut the shorts in order to make you stand out on stage. I'm telling you guys right now, investing in the Manifest Competition Wear brand is investing in the best version of you stepping on stage. So guys, if you haven't already, if you have an upcoming show, if you have a show that you are competing for in the future, right? I'm telling you guys right now, because we do not restock designs, make sure you go shop the Hero Campaign because these are the best board shorts out. I can promise you that. If you are looking for a coach, this will be the last week that I'm accepting clients before I sh completely shut down my onboarding process as I go into the Olympia prep. So all you guys have to do is click the link below and I can promise you guys this. The process will not be easy. I'm going to raise the standard of what you think is a heightened version of you. But my job is to maximize your potential and I can promise you this. I will do that. I cannot wait whether you guys want to turn pro, step on stage for the first time, shut it down and grow for the 2025 season. Lifestyle client, it doesn't matter. I'm going to help you become the best version of you. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.